All right, so she's a 58 year old female and she complains of pain and she twisted her ankle while running. Her foot is severely angled. Her sock is bloody. When you remove her sock, cut that sock off. Some people say, oh, you don't have to cut that off. They say, no, I like, I actually had one of these uh, earlier this year. And uh, I want to cut your sock off. No, just take it off. It won't hurt that much. I'm going to cut your sock off. Um, I observed, I observe an open wound and bone. The skin of her foot is warm and pink. And you should. It's a classic registry position. You should. What do you do? Well, let's look at this one. I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach with this because there are two words here that are going to make the answer for you stand right out. One is that it's the ankle, and the other is that it's severely angled or angulated. If I take this joint and I say that it's angulated, I'm going to splint that as found unless there's bad circulation. Oh, wait, the foot is warm and pink, which means that I am going to immobilize her foot in the position found. I'm not going to apply gentle traction and I'm not gonna mobilize her foot in the position of function. Now, let's say that I had a forearm fracture. I might wanna put a little bit of traction on, straighten that out, well, I would if I could, because uh, you do generally straighten long bones unless there's severe pain. I mean, it's gonna hurt, but straightening it actually makes the pain better because the muscles aren't contracting uh, against angulated bones uh, and also can reduce bleeding. So in a long bone, general traction and immobilizing it in a position of function is great, but this is a joint, right? It's an ankle and it's angulated and there's circulation. Now we're not gonna apply an air splint because the air splint um, only has one shape. It's gonna push it back into a more normal position. And wrapping her foot, ankle and lower leg with an elastic dressing doesn't immobilize. We can compress it a little bit with that, I guess. And the lower leg may immobilize the ankle, but really it's not going to do anything for the knee, which we also have to keep an eye on. So we're going to go to D as well. Karen has a great question. Straighten the bones when the bone is out of the skin. And the correct answer to that is yes. It seems kind of freaky, uh, but in a long bone, uh, this question always comes up in traction splinting. And there's nothing that says you can't immobilize uh, a, uh, and straighten a bone that's angulated. See, what happens is, let me go down here on the page. Let's say that we have, we have skin, and then we have inside that skin, we have a bone. And that bone, of course, has muscle around it and different things, right? So this is the bone. Now, if we take, and I'm drawing the leg here, if we take, and now, we break that bone and we angulate it. We have an opening in the skin what this does is now the, the size of the leg itself becomes bigger. And the size of the space around that bone, the capsule gets bigger, and it allows for increased bleeding throughout the area. So if I straighten that, it eliminates that space where the bone can bleed. And the body normally, when you break a bone, trust me, when you break a bone, the muscles contract to self-splint. And when that contracts against broken bones, it makes it hurt more. Now, if you have the ability to take sterile saline and rinse any junk away or pick any stuff out before you do it, that's great. 
but they're going to have to go through and surgically fix that bone anyways. And they're going to have a ton of antibiotics anyways. So the answer is technically yes, that you can do that. As long as no, re that you will straighten a long bone fracture, as long as no resistance is felt, and as long as the patient will, um, doesn't have severe pain. It's going to be painful, but not too painful. <clears throat> okay. Number four, going into medical emergencies from the trauma. We had broken bones. Now we're getting into medical emergencies. So unresponsive 58-year-old male, female, had a single seizure prior to your arrival. She hasn't woken up. And while you are performing your assessment, she has a brief tonic period, followed by generalized clonic activity. You should next. Okay. Now, this is a question because I wanted you to have one of these questions where all the answers have two parts. And sometimes when you have these administer oxygen and assess her vital signs and assess her glucose, administer all glucose, okay, these things are all there. But if one of them is wrong, you can't choose it. So she's 58, had a single seizure. She didn't wake up between seizures. She has a tonic-clonic seizure without a period of consciousness in between. Now, the definition of status epilepticus is that a patient who has a second seizure without fully regaining consciousness between the seizures, and I mean fully, or seizure that lasts for a prolonged period of time. Now, sources actually vary on what that time frame is, but I think the time frame is probably best at um, five minutes. Some say 10, I've seen some that say 30. Five minutes is a long seizure. So you've got a patient who's serious here. All right, so generalized clonic activity. Remember, tonic is the stiffening of the body and clonic is the jerking seizure type motion. You can't assess vital signs while somebody's actually having a seizure. And you can't give somebody oral glucose if they're having a seizure. So let's get rid of A and B, okay? That in this, we're going to get rid of those right off the bat. So now we have remove her clothing and begin to cool her or protect her head and begin transport. And you say, well, I guess C would be good if she's having a febrile seizure, but I don't know that she's having a febrile seizure. So as I look at this, I say to myself, let's look back at the question and see if there's anything that indicates that she has a fever. And I got nothing. But, so let's say that you say, I'm gonna remove this patient's clothing and begin to cool her while she's in status epilepticus, which is when we should transport. We don't know she has a fever. The correct answer here is D, protect your head and begin transport. So while you could, in theory, give a, a patient uh, with a seizure, oxygen by nasal cannula. I'm not sure how much their chest is really bringing in or out then anyways. And you can't assess vital signs, you can't give glucose, and cooling the patient and taking off the clothes would be a waste of time if this was status epilepticus. So the correct answer is D, let's get that patient to a hospital or call ALS. Now, if this were a paramedic question where they're looking for a medication, they may have a, a benzodiazepine medication in here um, that you can choose. <clears throat>